There's a lot to expect this January. Google settling $5 billion for tracking you in incognito. And could AMD actually release a card like this? Let's get into the hot news, everybody. It is Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024. I hope you had a merry new year. We're gonna jump on into a lot of the tech announcements that we're supposed to be expecting this coming month here in January 2024 because we do have CES taking place next week and there's a lot to be going on there but video cards put together a nice little roundup of everything that we can expect this January in the PC tech scene starting with Nvidia's announcement of the Super Series next week on January 8th at 8 a.m Pacific and then also following that day is going to be the CES announcement from Intel which will likely have laptop processors being shown off 14th gen HX series as well as having the non-K 65 watt non-overclockable versions of the 14th gen series. And then following that, we look at the 4070 Super launching on the 17th of January, the 4070 Tissiper launching on the 24th, which is the same day we're allegedly supposed to be getting the RX 7600 XT. And then the 4080 Super will close out the month of January on the 31st. So there's a lot to be anticipated this month. We obviously are still waiting to find out what the pricing is going to be. We will get into the specs on the Super Series right now because there are more details coming out about what we can expect performance-wise from the 4080 Super, the 4070 Tissiper, and the 4070 Super because it's not just going to be an increase in the amount of cores, which could get us actually better gaming performance. As you can see right here, the 4080 Super is supposed to have 5% increase in cores. The 4070 Tissiper is supposed to have a 10% increase, and the 4070 Super is supposed to have a 21.7% increase. But then there's also some clock speed boost 4% on the 4080 1.3% on the 4070 Ti and then 3.1% on the 4070 as well as some memory clock speed increases on the 4080 Super coming in at 0.6 gigabits per second faster giving you 20.2 gigabytes per second more total bandwidth but allegedly we're also supposed to be getting a higher amount of VRAM on the 4070 Tissiper. Allegedly according to this report the 4070 Ti Super is supposed to get that bump up from 12 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes which would allow for people to stop worrying so much about that and keeping pace with it on AMD side the 4070 super is still supposed to have the 12 gigabyte VRAM amount which will likely mean that AMD is still more competitive on that side the only real negative drawback on the super series launch besides price because we don't know anything about that is the 4070 super is going to have a higher TDP coming in at 20 watts higher which also means it's going to be forced to have that 16 pin power connector that could potentially melt not a great time there, but we always have a great time with Reese when he's our deal master. Last week of this shirt, thankfully, then we're we're done with me wearing it. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Happy New Year's, guys. Hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Had a great time down by the coast, but now I'm home. Well, home ish I'm at my parents' place, and I'll be home home in a little bit, so lots of travel for me. But otherwise, I had a great start to my year, and I've got a great start to today's deal, starting with the Corsair M65 RGB Elite Wired Gaming Mouse, which you can pick up for only $22.49 with the included promo code, making it $47.50 off. But then next up, we have a special one, which is the Huon Canvas 16, which is a graphics drawing tablet, which is currently going for only $289.99 with the coupon applied, making it $110 off. If you've ever wanted to get into drawing, I really recommend the Huon stuff. I have one of their tablets myself and I, I like it. That's the highest praise I can give something is I like it. And then next, continuing on the productivity side, we have the Samsung Viewfinity S9, which is a 27 inch 5K Thunderbolt 4 monitor for only $900, making it $699.99 off for a very productive video focused monitor, huge resolution, great color accuracy, and you know, looks pretty. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Google ran into a bad deal, Reese, which is the fact that they now owe $5 billion to a lawsuit for people who alleged that Google was actually tracking people in incognito mode, to which a lot of people say, oh no, really? And then the other half say, wow, you didn't think that they were lying about that? This lawsuit happened in 2020 with it being alleged that they were tracking in ways that they promised that they weren't going to. Google said, nah, -uh, we absolutely aren't doing that. It doesn't save users activity, even though websites could still collect information during that session. But according to all of this, it does seem like Google was actually tracking all of that and then going on to sell that ad data and web traffic so that it could be tracked beyond the incognito browser, which was 
was the main problem and why this lawsuit exists in the first place. So it's not quite clear how that $5 billion is going to get settled. Who's going to get that money? We'll keep you updated as that develops. But Google not necessarily being found guilty. The main thing here is that they were told that they would have to go to court over this. So Google just deciding to give the lawsuit filers the $5 billion because it was just way easier than having all of their details released in public. As we've seen with something like the Microsoft Activision Blizzard purchase, your dirty laundry gets aired very quickly, including things that aren't so bad, but then kind of leak a lot to the public. So company is trying to avoid that. And we talked earlier about how NVIDIA was trying to avoid giving people 16 gigabytes of VRAM. You couldn't get it on the 4070 or the 4070 Ti. But according to a new EEC filing, it looks like potentially the 7600 XT, which is going to be the, at least from what I'm gathering, one of the best mid-tier GPUs that we've gotten in many years could potentially be launching with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So this is according to a gigabyte Aorus EEC filing where there's the 7600 XT with 16 gigabytes of memory. Previous indications of the 7600 XT, like when we talked about it last week, was that it would have either 10 or 12. So this is the first entry we're seeing where it's now going to potentially be 16. This does leave a lot of questions out there of what's going to be the real amount, especially as AMD launches this later this year. Maybe potentially we could be put back in a situation like we have with the RX 580 and the RX 480, where there's two different VRAM amounts. That's part of the reason why that generation was so great. In case you wanted to save a little bit of money, you didn't need the extra VRAM. You could buy the four gigabyte RX 580. In case you need the extra four gigabytes for mining reasons, then you could pay a little bit more and get that too. Potentially a 7600 XT, we could be looking at an 8 and 16 gig version, although there hasn't been any reports of the 8 gig side of things. Maybe 12 and 16. The only reason that would be funny is because then the memory speed would have to be different because the memory bus would would have to change in between 12 and 16 gigs but it's in, it's intriguing nonetheless the 7600 xt could be a very big deal a good i'm hoping not 299 but you know 349 to 299 somewhere in that sale region where you can get 12 to 16 gigabytes of vram a very very competent high-end 1080p card that can also keep pace in 1440p in a lot of titles that would be great I would love to see that maybe get back to the form of the way mid-tier cards used to be in the 1060, 480, 580 days. And the days of me reading your comments are not over. It's a new year. It's a new you. Let's go ahead and see what you guys had to say about last week's episode. We got Terrible Crap HD saying the 7600 at 349 would be not too bad, but IMO needs to be at $300 to absolutely destroy the crap out of NVIDIA. I do agree. 299 would be the best, but the 7600 does come in at that 269 price point, which just makes it really difficult. Maybe 329 a $60 difference between the 7600 and the XT version would at least in my mind, separate it enough. And then that puts it at what the 3060 launched at, at 329. And I think that's still very, very competitive. 349, if it does come with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, I'm not going to complain about that. Maybe I'll have other reasons to complain about it like I did with the 6500 XT, which had a whole bunch of problems. And we got Foxy Loon saying, although I'm hyped to see viable options from AMD as of late, a gripe I have with AMD cards is I wish they were more readily supported in productivity software. It's disappointing that I have to CPU software render in apps like Blender when I have a perfectly capable 6700 XT in my machine sitting idle. The other option is to buy something like a 4060 or another used Nvidia card in the same price bracket, but why should I have to side grade just for software support? This is one of the things that nvidia has been talking about lately they are not necessarily a hardware company first but they are a software company that happens to make hardware and that's one of the assets that nvidia has had over the years is the fact that number one they are just prioritizing the applications that people actually use making sure that their gpus are being developed for and that all of the acceleration is happening nvidia has put themselves in a very very good place when it comes to that and amd is still trying to play catch up and we're kind of seeing that happen with intel with just how much software work has to be done on something like the arc series gpus it takes a long time to actually catch up to where the rest of the industry is nvidia was dominant for so long amd's really working to get there intel's even a little bit further behind although they do have some key holdings in places where you have quick sync being used and some other accelerations that were being used on integrated graphics so intel does 
have some bit of advantage there. It's intriguing to see where we are. I agree with you, AMD, if they could figure out their software, not even driver, but yes, software support on a lot of different professional applications, they would start to get recommended a lot more. We got 10 Kenobi saying AMD will sabotage themselves once again. And the drunken monkey saying AMD will crush Nvidia. Hearing that for 15 years already. Yeah, that's every time you want to get excited for AMD, something happens where they don't quite fulfill their end of the bargain on a lot of different things. I think the, the best launch we've had is the 7000 series. This is one of the first ones where it's like, oh, okay, they're doing really well. They could have done better if the 7900X TX came in at that $699 price point, they would have been in everybody system, I would have guessed. But because they were trying to position themselves against something like the 4080, they raised the price to $999. So I'm the happiest with AMD this generation than I've been since the 580. The 580 was such a good mid mid-tier card. I can't describe how good that is. They've kind of been hit or miss since then. 6,000 series saw them get their act together, but then there was the GPU shortage. 7,000 series, I really feel like is a good turning point for them. And I hope they keep down this path that they've been on. And we'll close out with AA battery saying, Nvidia already came out and said that they have the 5090 prep, but they're holding on to it in case AMD has a competitor and they're not going to release it until AMD comes out with their viable competitor. I'm just glad AMD will force Nvidia's hand. Nvidia never said that. I. I've seen people talk about this, but Nvidia didn't say that. That's some report that you're hearing from some rumor mill somewhere else, which we do report on here on Hot News, so I don't wanna knock that, but uh, Nvidia has not said anything like that. And additionally, if Nvidia had a card that could be the generational improvement from the 4090 to the 5090, they would have announced it already publicly, which, they haven't because one of the things they're trying to win is the AI arms race. And if they have a card that is so much more dominant than everybody else, they honestly have no reason to withhold that right now. If they came out and started selling something that could put AMD and every other accelerator for AI to shame in a, a trouncing format, they have no reason to wait for AMD at this point. They have tens of billions of dollars riding on them having the latest and greatest out on the market. I don't know if they need to withhold it. So I don't know if I would, I, I would trust that report that they just have it ready. Is it in development? Yeah, more than likely. Is it probably gonna launch towards the end of this year? Yeah, more than likely or early next year, this time next year during CES. But Nvidia has not said that. We gotta see what what is being said, what's still rumor, all that kind of stuff. But uh, I hear a rumor that I will be back with more of the hottest tech news tomorrow.